Hello, and today on Ducks Talk, we will talk about the final week of the regular season for the Ducks. We're going to talk about, we're going to grade the Ducks, we're going to give them a report card, see how they did this year, and we're also going to give out awards, you know, for the best players on the Ducks, and then finally, we're going to preview the playoff potential matchups for the Ducks. Without further ado, let's get started. Alright, so the Ducks were, <laughs> the Ducks were, uh, so far, they're 50-19-8, and eight, first in the Pacific Division with 108 points, which is, uh, they also have, they're also first in goals per game with uh, 3.2, they're 10th in the league in goals against in uh, 2.5, and 21st in power play percentage, 16.5%, which isn't that great, they're 18th in the league in Penalty percentage, it's around average, and that's pretty much their outlook. It it wasn't that great. Nobody thought they were going to be great, but they've uh, proved a lot of people wrong, and that's why I really like about this team. Nobody thought that they were going to be as good as they were last year, but I think they're even better than last year. So that's what I think about this team. I think this team could definitely win a Stanley Cup, and we will definitely see on the ongoing weeks what will happen to this team so we're gonna give out grades now all right so goaltending goaltending this was tough for me so I gave it a B plus and here's my reason why um, I gave it a B plus partly because they've been inconsistent recently they they had showed moments of greatness, but they also showed moments of, you know, five goals just go by you like that. And you got to blame the defense, but you also got to blame the goalie because they're the one in net. So I give them a B plus for that reason. Jonas Hiller is doing really good, but so is Frederick Anderson. They're doing good, not great. Um, great would be you know, a 1.37 goals against average, you know, something amazing. They're, they're around the two and a half GAA goals against average. They're just around average, above average. So that's pretty good, B+. Plus. Moving on, wing play, right wing, left wing, that are right next to the centerman. Uh, I give them an A+. Plus. Here's my reason why. Corey Perry is second in the league in scoring with 41 goals on the season. And the rest of the wingers have 60 goals. So they've all done their part for scoring. Excluding Dustin Penner's 13 goals that he had on the season before he got traded to the Washington Capitals. They've all done their part. It was, it's not just one player doing a certain thing. Every, everybody's doing their part. And that's what I like about this wing play. They're all doing their part. Maybe more than others, like Corey Perry, but they're all uh, doing their part, pushing the limit, doing the much that they could to propel the team to victory. Now, coaching. Coaching, I gave a B. I gave a B because the staff has, has they've done a good job. But since coming back from the break, they've been on kind of a slide. They've had some wins, but they've also had some losses. Very inconsistent since the winter break or since I wouldn't say winter I would say the the winter olympics the winter olympics but it was replacing the all-star break that they would have but because of the they represent their countries in the ice hockey but because of that and because of their uh, power play issues hasn't been that great it's never been that this great this season it's always been inconsistent so I really think you have to put some of the blame on the coaches you know, you, you can put some of the blame on the players, but you also have to put some of the blame on the players because, or some of the blame on the coaches, I beg your pardon, because they also have the ones directing the players, telling them what plays to run. I know the players are out there playing it, but the coaches are also out there designing plays. And if you're just designing some normal, original play, just pass, pass, that's not going to work. You know, you got to get something original, something more, you know, more original going on here. So that's that. Uh, defensemen, the ones staying in the back to make sure nothing else happens. Uh, I give them a B plus. They're doing really well this season. 
Uh, they they did a really superb job all season. Uh, they added an enforcer, Stefan Robodon from the <coughs> excuse me from the Dallas Stars. They've done an incredible job. Uh, I just think they've done an absolute amazing job, even with Cam Fowler uh, being injured out for most not most part, but out for a good portion of the of the starts uh, recently. They've been they've been doing pretty well without him, and I think it's been an amazing job this defenseman has done replacing a player like Cam Fowler. To replace a player like Cam Fowler, you know, you have to take, it's not just one player, you have to get several players to replace a guy like that. And they've done an amazing job. Um, so, yeah, that's that's a, a good job by the Ducks defenseman to replace a guy like Cam Fowler. I give him a B plus. Would have given him an A if Cam Fowler would have stayed, stayed healthy, but I give him a B plus for that reason. Uh, centerman. Centerman. I give him an A plus. Ryan Gitzlaff is leading the centerman with 84 points, 31 goals, and 53 assists. But he's not the only one doing anything. You got Nick Bonino with 20 goals and 27 assists for a total of 47 points. And Matthew Perot and Andrew Cogliano both have over 35 points. Four centers have over uh, 20 points, which is unbelievable. Everybody is having production for the most part as a center. doesn't matter which line they're on. They're just putting pucks to the net or uh, helping with the score of the goal with an assist. They're doing an incredible job, and I think they're, you know, they, they couldn't they couldn't do any better with them with an A plus. So they're just, you know, unbelievable. So now we go to go to the awards portion of the show where I just give out awards for what I think is doable. You know, I'll give out MVPs and certain awards like that. So my MVP for the Anaheim Ducks, Corey Perry. Now, I know what you're saying, but he doesn't have the most points. Corey, Ryan Gitzlaff does. I know what you're saying. But Corey Perry is the heart and soul of this team. Let's not, you know, make any bones about it here. He has, he's second in the league in goals with 41, and he's added 37 assists. So this dude is all over the place. He's everywhere. And when he doesn't score, you can kind of tell that they've lost the game. Because he's there everywhere. He's you know, he's, he's our best player, or one of their best players. Now, uh, another award, what a save. Frederick Anderson, he has a 2.227 goals against average. Frederick Anderson has been doing pretty well since the release, since the ill Jonas Hiller has gone down with the ills. He's missed a couple games, and... Frederick Anderson has stepped in for him to replace him. He's been doing pretty well with a 9.4 goals against average in the last four games he's played. However, he is injured right now in his day-to-day, -day, aren't we all, <laughs> with an upper body injury. So probably Jonas Hiller will start the next game against the Avalanche, or <laughs> against the Oilers tonight. Now, point taken. Award goes to the player with the most points on the team. Goes to Ryan Getzlaff. He has 84 points, most on the Ducks. I mean, what else can you say about him? He's incredible. He's uh, more known for his passing than his than his goals. That's why it's a pretty pretty uncommon that he's scoring 31 point or 31 goals. I beg your pardon. Uh, 31 goals. You know, this is his career year. He's never scored more than 20 goals, so scoring 31 is just incredible for him. So, you know, he's he's more known for an assist, and you know, he just had he's having an incredible year. 84 points. You know, what, can, what else can you say about Ryan Getzlaff? You know, he's the man. Now, now this is a part of the show. We're going to t talk about the potential playoff first-round matchup for the Ducks. Right now, if the, if the playoffs started today, the Ducks would play the Minnesota Wild. Now, the Minnesota Wild, the Ducks won that series. They beat them 2-1. and one. Now, do I like their chances? Yes, I do. I do like their chances. I like them to beat the, the Minnesota Wild if they did face them in a series Best out of seven, four games to one. Now, if the, the the St. Louis Blues lost position and the Ducks beat them in the positions, 
they would end up facing the St. Louis, or not the St. Louis, the Dallas Stars. Now, the the, the Dallas Stars beat them in the series two, one to two. And do I still do I like their chances against the Dallas Stars? Yes, yes, I do because that team is is not where it needs to be. They're not there yet. They need a couple more years to actually get over the hump. So I do like them in a series for uh, to be to sweep the Dallas Stars four to nothing. And lastly, we have the Los Angeles Kings. If they fall out of the Pacific Division t title, they go in the wild card position, or not the wild card, the second place in the Pacific Division. They face the Los Angeles Kings. Their series against them is three and one, three zero oh and one. And they still have one game to left to play against the Kings this season. Now, on next week's show. We will have a huge Ducks preview playoff edition. We're going to d dive real deep. We, we just, you know, touched on to it a little bit, but we're going to dive real deep into it next week. We're going to talk about their chance of winning it all next year, or this, not next year, this year. We're going to talk about their first round matchups. We're going to talk about what they have to do to win it all, what they, what their kind of checklist they need to do. We're going to talk about all these things next week and much more. So if you like this show, or if you want to contact me, you can follow me on Twitter at, at number one, Jack Esco with a capital J, Esco. Or you can add me on Google Plus in my circle, just type in Jack Esco. Or you can go on YouTube and subscribe to my channel, just search Jack Esco. All right. You know, this has been, this is Jack Esco. I'm going to try to do better the next time. And remember, go Ducks. All right.